Hello again, our most valued student. My name is Confident. Welcome to our 24 minute lesson. And this is also a continuation of one of the lessons that I did on trigonometric identities. And we were looking at proving some of these trick identities. So I've got uh, two questions that I want us also to go through. I felt like I should do more of these problems as there were um, different strategies that I was using when I was solving these trick identities. Now, the first question that I'm given, as you can see, it is uh, worth three marks and you can see what I'm having. Now, let us look at the solution. It says you must prove that the left hand side is equal or identical to the right hand side. So in this case, I can see that my left hand side is the one that has got a more stuff. So let me choose the um, let me choose instead the left hand side. So if I'm choosing the left hand side, I have to indicate that I'm choosing the left hand side. So my left hand side, what do I have? I have tan theta plus one over sec theta. Now there are a few things that you need to know here. If I can use a different pen, you, you need to know that tan theta is equal to sin theta or sin theta over cos theta that's the first thing again you need to know that sec theta is equal to 1 over cos theta these identities that you need to generally know so now if i move on then i will have now 10 theta plus 1 over sec theta which is equal to now in 10 theta then i use that one which is sine theta over cos theta plus one all over now remember this we said over one over cos theta you mustn't let this confuse you it is not confusing at all but you just need to understand the fractions now i'm going to be interested in this particular division line i'm going to change this to become like a division sign because I want to, um, I'm going to utilize that concept whereby instead of this division line, I'm going to use that division line. You can, you will see how I'm going to do it. So now at the same time, I'm going to solve this particular fraction. Now this is over one. So if I'm solving this particular fraction, the common denominator between one and cos theta, what I have is, it is cos theta. Now, cos theta into cos theta is 1. 1 times sine theta. I have got sine theta plus 1 into cos theta. It is cos theta. Cos theta times 1. I will have my cos theta. This is uh, solving fractions. You need to understand your lessons on fractions. So the top part, I use the concept of solving of fractions. Now, as I told you, instead of using that line, I'm going to use my line of divided that's what i want to use so divided by one over cos theta then if i continue this will be my sin theta plus cos theta all over cos theta now i have to change the division sign into a multiplication sign now when i change into a multiplication sign remember what you do, you invert instead of 1 over cos theta, now it becomes cos theta over 1. It's a reciprocal. Now, when I've done that, I'm able now to cancel the cos with that cos. And you can see what is remaining. This is same now as equal to sin theta plus cos theta. And I think you can see now that this is identical to my right hand side which is my right hand side. So in a way, I've managed to prove that the left hand side is equivalent to the right hand side. Now, let me end the lesson by doing the last one. Again, you are proving uh, the trick identity. In this case, you are proving that the left hand side, you can see we're given our left hand side here. It's quite um, uh, long things there. They are saying it is equal to the right hand side and it's five marks. So I'm going to do it in parts by parts. In this case, 
I'm not going to write everything, but I'm just going to uh, work on it piece by piece. And then I'm going to pull everything at once so that you can see how that could have been done. So now let us start by looking at the first part. I want to simplify the first part. Remember, I'm starting on the left hand side. So as I'm starting on the left hand side, the first thing I have on the left hand side is cos squared 180 plus x. Now I'm going to draw my cast diagram. Remember I told you this is number one. This is number two. I used it previously. This is number three and this is number four. And you must remember all students take chemistry. Well, I love chemistry because I did chemistry in my in my in my university. So some people they say all students uh, take anything for C or all students take whatever you can imagine for C. I usually say chemistry. Now with that in mind, I can see that 180 plus x, this one, it is in quadrant number 3. So in quadrant number 3, you can see that only 10 is positive but cos is negative. So now if I can continue with cos, I'm going to have, in this case, this is same as, as I said, you put a bracket, it's cos 180 plus x squared the squared is outside but now this is equal to so cos is negative it is negative cos x squared but don't forget to put the bracket if you can do it properly you must put the bracket with a square because it's cos squared but these are two this is same as negative cos x multiplied by another negative cos x and you know a negative multiplied by a negative is a positive. So this is same as positive cos squared x. So in this case, we have reduced the first one into that. Now if you continue. We can then reduce in this case. Let me reduce that part. So in this case, I've got tan, which is or 10 360 degrees minus x it's 10 squared so now as I say it again you can rewrite it as in this case you can see that it is 10 360 minus x and then you can put your square in the outside like that but now if I go back to my cast diagram, the, 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 the diagram that I did here in this case, you can see that 10, 360, 360 is in the fourth quadrant. And in the fourth quadrant, only cos is positive. So which means 10 is negative. So I can move on to say this then becomes 10. It's negative, remember? It's negative 10x squared. Similarly with cos, if it's a negative, it becomes a positive 10 squared x. So now, having done that, I can then be able to use my reduced versions to now simplify where there was cos squared, where there was the first one. In this case, I'm going to use that. And the second one, I'm also going to use that. So now, if I can write my question back so i will have cos squared x and then i've got a bracket which is 2 plus 10 squared x i don't know that i see what i'm doing but um i hope it makes sense so this is how it reduced so you can see the cos i used and you can see the 10 that i used so after that I can distribute my cos squared or open the bracket in which case it will affect both because there is a plus sign it will affect both of those which are inside the bracket so i'm going to have my cos squared x multiplied by two but i don't put two after so it's it's always good to put two before and then after that again plus 
Now, so that I don't waste time, we can come back here on 10 squared and then say, but this, you know, the proof for 10 or the identity for 10, this is same as sine squared x over cos squared x. Now, where am I taking it? I'm taking it from the identity which says 10 theta is equal to sin theta over cos theta. So now if it's squared, then you just put squared and squared. You can see that I put a squared, I put a squared because there was a squared. So that's basically what I'm using. So I'm going to use that identity to say this is same as that times that it is cos squared x multiplied by sin squared x over the identity this is the identity of, of 10 over cos squared x the reason why I, I did that is because I want these two to cancel out so if I've done that then I can continue but don't forget not to lose sight of your, uh, your your proof. This becomes then my 2 cos squared x plus sine squared x. Now when I've done that, remember the aim is to go to sine or to sin. I mustn't have cos with me, so I just have to make sure that I'm having only 2 and sin squared but now the thing is I've got cos and I must get rid of this cos but how do I get rid of the cos again the identities are going to help you now remember the identity which says cos squared x very important identity this one for your n3 and how you can rewrite it in different ways and then this says is equal to 1 but now I want to write cos squared in terms of sin of sin squared, so I will have cos squared x. This will jump the cosine to become one minus sin squared x. So now where there was cos squared, I'm going to introduce sin. So in this case, I'm going to have two into one minus sin squared x. That's what I'm putting there. I'm putting that which is that one but don't forget that the 2 is outside and it affecting everything and then after that I've got plus sin squared x if I continue with that I can now distribute the 2 it multiplies that and it multiplies that it's 2 minus 2 sin squared x plus sin squared now if I can finalize that part and see where is this going, you can see something now. If I've got 2 plus 2, I mean 2 minus 2 is like 2 sin squared x minus 2 sin minus plus uh, sin squared x. If you can have a look at this, you can see then with your algebra, this is 2, this is minus 2 plus 1, which is minus 1 sin squared x so in other ways you can actually get re uh, leave out the one which is same as 2 minus sin squared x now if you still remember we have got our question that we needed to prove that it must be 2 minus sin squared x and you can see that we managed to prove that this is 2 minus sin squared x then you can move on further to say this is equal to my right hand side. So you have managed to prove that. So in a nutshell, and to wrap it up, I was giving you strategies on how you can solve these trigonometric identities when given um, a question in an exam. But as you can see, it is very important for you to know your two rules or your two laws or your two theorems. And the, the one that we have been using consistently if you remember, it was the first. Uh, the first one is the cos squared theta plus sine squared theta is equal to one. This is a very very important law, or very very important rule that I always advise you to know.
as the one and the second one that we've been using is 10 theta is equal to sine theta over cos theta as well as other different trigonometric proofs some of them are there at the back of your paper so when you arrive in the exam be uh, remember to check at the back of your paper you might discover that they've given you some of these identities which you can use to your benefit so that you don't have to always master them now we have come to the end of our 24 minute lesson thank you